Hello everyone. Uh, so at this moment, I will show you how to do a uh, deep learning regression using our engine and TensorFlow. But I will also show you how to do it in our engine uh, directly using random forest regression. And while on the Keras of TensorFlow, I will use you know a uh, dense layer like like usual. Uh, so first, I'm deciding the variable I'm gonna use. So I use all the spectral band of Landsat uh, eight and nine. And I use another uh, index, you know, FEI, NBR, NDMI, NDWI, NDPI, and NDBAI, I guess, and elevation. Yes, you know, uh, this is the code mask function. It's very common in my previous video. And this is the image uh, where I create the composite image. Let's try to run it first. I guess this is legend. <laughs> you can just ignore this for a while. Maybe you can just hide it for now. So I will focus on the data first. <laughs> okay. Ah, so this the area. The area is about is in the West Kalimantan, I guess. This area is quite small, you know, for practical purposes. You know, this I don't know what's the region actually. <laughs> I just choose random area in Kalimantan, which I see that have a diverse landscape. Uh, next what I do is that uh, I show image. Then I create the indexes, you know, I create the index image. Uh, zoom in a while or zoom in. Then uh, for the dam, uh, you, you see that uh, the dam is actually the range of value is zero to infinite, right? And for deep learning, it's better to have a data where the value is have a scale from zero to one. So for index image, I also, I claim the, the value and uh, rescale image. So where Minus one is equal one, and one is still one. And for them, I'll try to lock the data first, you know, uh, natural logarithm. Then I divide by ten, and I claim it to zero to one. So the value will be more uh, zero to one value. Then for image, I will also stretch the image, stretch it uh, in square root, uh, and I add the in this image. I will project it to one hundred meter because I want to be a hectare. You know, so one hundred by one hundred is like. A hectare, right? Then I export the image, uh, I export it uh, to my drive named Landsat 100M. Then, I'll do, yeah, that's what I do. I export it and then I also extract the value. So, I already have sample of AGB or a front biomass. This data actually is a uh, what I call a procedure data because there is no field work on this, <laughs> so you can just it's just for random. There's only like 58 sample I made, it's just very random. This data is not. Uh, it's not based on the ground truth, okay? So be your mind. It's like only for you know this pro this stuff, you know, this training. It's uh, empty data. Uh, I want to just want to go to do the method, you know, the method and how to do it. So this is how you do it, I guess. Then I try to extract the value, you know, using sample and properties label. Then after that, I extract the value uh, from the image. I export it uh, to my drive. So that's in my drive. Okay, maybe we can go here. Maybe I'll try to restart all this. Okay. I'm gonna restart runtime. Disconnect and delete runtime. Uh, so I already exported to my drive. You can see in the, the task, I save it somewhere. Uh, last night, it's in my drive, I guess. So here, uh, so I have the AGB and the, no, AGB is the result, actually. Okay, I will delete this first. <laughs> So this is the I export, then the AGB sample, you know, in JSV. Then after we export it, uh, I try to uh, open my collab. You can, just, I will, I will give my link to my collab uh, script. So I install the Raster UI part uh, Python because this sample is quite important if you want to, uh, you know, to, to to visualize the image. So I export the image first. You know, I install the package first. This is my collab. Okay, it's gonna take a while. Then after that, I uh, try to import some packages like pandas, you know, keras, uh, scikit-learn, you know, uh, matplotlib, etc. So import some packages. Then I will also mount my drive, you know, so I can access my Google Drive file from Colab. I mount it. Connect to my Google Drive. I 
gonna take a while. Yeah, you sweet. <laughs> Wait so long. Okay. Uh, and after that, okay, this is the features and label to help me uh, make the parameter. This is the sample pad and image pad based on my Drupal drive. Then I'll try to load the image first to see the data would be like, you know. I'm gonna take a while. Oh, this is data, you know. I stretch it using near swear and red band. Then yeah, this is the sample. Uh, this is the sample distribution. Zero or something like that that I, that, I, that I extract, you know. This is the AGB file. AGB is the one we predicted. Well, that is the rest of this. It's like the, you know, the predictor. Okay, I'll continue. So I, I need to split the sample, you know, to become trend and test you know, using scikit.learn package, uh, trend test split, where I split it to 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.24% of the, uh, 0 0.2 for the test, 0 0.8 is for the trend. That's what I do. Then after that, I try to change equity to numpy. And for the, you know, I give you give you data. I try to divide it by 450 so that the value will be zero to one. You know, because I see that the max value is about 400. I guess maybe there is some data that is 400. I think not sure. Yeah, so yeah, I try to divide it to 450 so that the score will be zero to one to make it easier for the uh, keras classifier, you know, keras classifier to understand the value. Then I split the data. This is the shape of the file. The further model is very simple model only three dense layer, it's very simple. You know, we didn't have to make it so complicated. Okay, if we look at the model, it's only 448 kilobyte, very simple model. And let's switch run it. So let's see that for the compiler, uh, using the measure Adam and loss MSE or main square error, and matrix also main square error. I also use early stopping so that if the loss is getting higher, it will stop to train, you know, to what I do. And for train, for the data using the same train data, Best size one callback stop and I will do it for 20 epochs. Let's try to run the model. Okay, you see in uh, in the regression, it's not it's different from you know classification because you expect the mean square error to be as much as low as possible, loss as low as possible. So we don't really uh, cater to uh, you know the accuracy part. There's you can use error too, I guess. So it's quite low, 0 0.0.3 for the losses uh, for the mean square error. Looks fine. Let's see the the progress of the data is like this. Okay. And let's try to predict the image. Okay. Ah, I see the, the R2 is 0 0.8. It's quite good. And this is the prediction label, you know, the distribution of the value. Yeah, I guess it's quite good. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's show the image. Let's show the results. Okay. We apply the model, predict the data. Oh, see the results. We see green is more, you know, the data is more, uh, what I call it, the more IGB, uh, above ground biomass, and the yellow one or white one is heaven low by ground biomass. You know. Oh, yeah, make sure that after you predict, you need to multiply it by 450 because previously in the model, we, we, multi we divided by 450. So you have to multiply it by 450 again to get the, the actual result. Then you can save the data here. Uh, you know, into your drive using this raster you want. So I just save it right now. Ah, it's done. So quick. Let's see my Google Drive. Is it there? Um, I guess taking a while. Ah, it's done. You can sh open it in QGIS. It's gonna take a while. Okay, it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna take open the QJS. Yeah, I'll open my drive first, I guess. Before waiting for the it's be in my Google Drive. Will be in this area. Different regression. I can just copy it again. Okay, let's copy data, show the data. Oh, this oh this is the data. So we can visualize it. The same procedure color. Yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, this is the seed distribution. So there is have a high, a high biomass, a high 
above ground biomass is green and the low one is yellow. And this is for deep learning, right? You can also do it in range you know, easily. So after you extract the data, right? You get the model, you just find the forest, you train, uh, choose the, the extract value, and you know, you train here. Uh, then I get the label of the data, the variables too, based on the top of the data, you know, like, you know, like from here. <laughs> then after that, show the displaying. I, uh, I test the sample, you know, I, I put the R, R square of the data. Then I plot the data too, to see the distribution. Then I predict the data. Then I show the legend. Let's try to run this uh, data <laughs> in this uh, model. Oh, the R2 is quite low. <laughs> Let's try to increase the train data. Maybe it was too low. I mean, it's much better before. Still 0 0.6. I guess the data is much better in the data regression because but it's from here is showed at 0 0.8 <laughs> with that. So if you're using a random forest regression at this moment, I, you can get like 0 0.6 for the R square, but for the deep learning, we can get up to 0 0.8 and, uh, R square, which is quite good, I guess. So distribution is a result. You can export the data, you, know? you can inspect the data too, where's the AGB is quite high, where's the low one. This for 300 something, this have like zero, almost zero, 18. Yeah, you can export the data, like that. <laughs> so this is the burning one. So I see that you can have more accurate data, I guess, from this model. Ah, okay, I think that's it uh, for our today talk. You can implement this on your own. You can use another data. Does it have to be AGB or uh, Biomass? You can use another one. Just make sure you understand how to do it. Thank you, bye.